I will open up my terminal and I will create a second tab. The first tab will be working for my local system and the second tab will be working on the remote system. So first on the second tab, I will log into a remote system. And at this point I have to use a password. And now I go back to the first tab on my own system to set up the key. I generate a key with this command, pick the default file name, and I have to set a passphrase, which protects my key. This creates a hidden directory called .ssh, and there are two files in it. One of those files is a .pub file, which contains the public portion of the key. And here I have changed permissions on it to make them more restrictive as required by SSH. And now I will add my private key, which is this file without the .pub, to my Mac keychain. It's important to keep your private key only on your own computer, never copy it anywhere else. And I can look at my public key, and here it is. Now, one more thing I need to do is I don't want to use my Mac passphrase on the key every time I use it, so I can make SSH use the values stored in the keychain by adding the following two lines to a file called .ssh slash config, which I have just created. And this is all I need to do on my own computer. Now on the remote system, I create a directory called .ssh. Inside this directory, I edit a file called authorized keys. And now I go back to the first tab and I copy the content here. I hit Control X, save. This saves uh, the public key to this file. And now I need to run two more commands to make permissions on the files and the directory I just created more restrictive. And that's it. Now I should be able to log into the remote machine without a password. And indeed I have done this. So finally, I will show you the commands I have used in this video.